Why subscribe to this channel? Well, my photography is good and I don't waste your time. Let's get to the video, see? The automotive landscape has changed. SUVs and crossovers dominate sales. Traditional cars have been declining for years and coupes? <laughs> Those numbers are cratering. 91 million vehicles were sold worldwide in 2019. It's estimated only 800,000 of them were two doors. Thank goodness the solidly refreshed Mercedes-Benz E-Class soldiers on with a pair of doors, along with sedan, convertible, and wagon body styles. There's the argument that it's hard to load people into the back of a coupe, but watch traffic next time you're out. 90% of cars only have a driver, no passengers at all. Just saying. Let's not forget Mercedes is the company that coined the term four-door coupe. Uh, is that a thing? I don't think so, really. Uh, coupes are two doors. Glad that Mercedes is still making them. You know, there are brands that don't have any two doors anymore. FYI, Ford Mustang is the best-selling two-door, moving some 113,000 copies in 2019. Mercedes is most likely held back by price. The E450 starts at $70,500. This particular one has a few options, as most Mercedes will. It goes for 81.6 as tested. The major contributors to the inflation are the AMG line trim package, air body control suspension, Napa leather, and a dry assist package which bundles stuff like adaptive cruise, evasive steering assist, and lane keep assist. Unlike the E-Class sedan I reviewed, the coupe is not available with a four-cylinder engine. Power starts with a three-liter turbocharged inline six-cylinder with EQ boost. In other words, it's a 48-volt mild hybrid. The ignition button pulses with anticipation, so the smooth start is almost anticlimactic. There's 362 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque on tap. The refinement is perfect for this car. Normally rear drive, 4MATIC all-wheel drive tax 2500 bucks onto the tab. The transmission is a 9-speed. The Mercedes column selector saves space, so that's the best I can say for it. Like nearly all cars these days, the E450 has drive modes. The individual setting is nice, and because of the adjustable suspension, it can be tuned for less roll and dive during hard maneuvers. 0 to 60 is a 5 second flat affair in the E450 and because it's a 6 it sounds smooth, it's authoritative rather than a turbo 4, those don't sound nearly as good. Not fast enough for you? Well, another 10 grand will buy you the AMG E53, and that does the zero to 60 dash in 4.3 seconds. Hey, 80 grand for this coupe is already expensive, and some might say overpriced. Anybody thinking that should actually drive the 450. It has a gravity about it that's not easily matched. SUVs are always reminding you there are chores to be done and kids to shuttle about. Coupes bring a selfish vibe to the drive. They won't take on tons of cargo. Chances are the back seat will remain empty. It's just you and a special someone if they're lucky, but you can always get people into the back when needed. Some cars are better road trip vehicles than others. This one, this one is ideal. It's silky smooth, it's comfortable, it's quiet. I need to go on a road trip. I've been working too hard. I know you don't think I have a job, but you know, I do put in the hours, I really do. You're not feeling sorry for me, are you? <laughs> of course you're not. The 450 eats up miles effortlessly, though the optional low-profile rubber on 19-inch wheels does let expansion joints through. Visibility is pretty good, though it doesn't have the raised seating position of a GLE. The navigation system is outfitted for augmented reality cues that helps reduce the stress level further. When it comes to driving dynamics, you know, sport versus comfort, this one is... Yeah, sporty-ish, uh, it leans towards comfort 
and that's okay. Remember, there's always the AMG version if you really need to bend around a corner hard. Not that this one isn't fun. The 450 is good for grins on empty roads far from the main highway. I prefer sport mode. To me, sport plus gets flintier than a luxury coupe should. For the few that might play on a track to really explore the limits, more power, tire, and suspension from the AMG version would be the way to empty your wallet. I've said it before, I will say it again, brakes don't get their due. Everybody talks about acceleration. Nobody focuses on the brakes, that'll save your butt. These have excellent modulation, good control and stopping power. The squirrels of America will thank you and compliment you on your fine taste in coupes. Once again, I highly prefer the sound of a six over the turbocharged four cylinders because you know, in a luxury vehicle, the sonic quality is just so much more appropriate. This isn't throaty or growly, but it really works. Every time I pull away, I think of the four-cylinder E350 sedan I drove and how much this engine would improve that car. Please test drive both engines so you understand this. I always test the automatic engine stop start system because you know, that's something that you live with. Uh, this one is almost undetectable when stopping. Take your foot off the brake. Wow, very smooth. Nicely done, Mercedes. It's a mild hybrid and they tend to have that silkiness, so there's that. When it comes to fuel economy, this 4MATIC version gets 25 miles per gallon average, according to the EPA. That's one less than the rear drive version. Remember, all-wheel drive, not the penalty it used to be. And compared to the Turbo 4 in the E350 sedan, fuel economy of the inline-6 is essentially the same. The 450 doesn't have a drinking problem. One thing you get with any Mercedes, an excellent cockpit, and it's better for 2021. There's no griping about materials. Fit and finish is perfect. It looks spendy. This one is optioned with heated armrests and rapid seat warming, plus an air scarf that blows warm air on your neck, something that you'd expect on a convertible. And for that long cross-country trip I want to take, comfortable vented seats have a slight massage setting to help keep drivers alert. Like the sedan, the instrument panel as a whole seems inspired by an Eames chair. It's dominated by two 12.3 inch screens, fused to look like one. There are all sorts of ways to configure the gauge cluster. You'll never be poured. This can be done using small trackpad like units on the steering wheel that I kind of like, or by touch, or use the larger, more traditional trackpad. The interface menu is very deep, which sometimes makes finding what you want cumbersome, but it sure looks good. E-Class now has the MBUX user interface with an excellent voice assistant. You can ask it where the nearest Starbucks or gas station is, or maybe something a little bit more complex. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? What's the secret to a good marriage? I'm sorry, but I can't help you with that right now. That non-answer might be the answer. A fragrance system can be adjusted from very light to full-on auntie that wears too much perfume mode. I am a fan of Mercedes ambient lighting. It always pleases. It can be as subtle or as gaudy as you like. E-Class does not judge. There will be no complaining about the Burmester surround audio system, and this is standard, folks. Small gripes, uh, door pockets aren't lined, things can rattle around, and I find the door releases to be a little small. Even if the back seat doesn't get much use, it's not as if you have to be a gymnast to get back there. It's as gracious as possible, expected from a luxury vehicle. Evil Twin is a fair weather tester. He tends not to show up when I have coupes because he finds them cramped and uncomfortable. Oftentimes they are. E-Class is not half bad. I've got this much headroom at five foot nine. Foot, knee, and legroom, certainly adequate. This seats too. Your snacks and drinks, they get VIP treatment. There are pockets on the seat backs. That's kind of unexpected. A place to charge up phones, good little cubbies for storing things. Uh, the seat cushions are on the high side, so thigh support is actually good. They didn't drop them down to get that headroom. All in all, not bad back here. Just climbing back here is a bit of a hassle, like any coupe. 
A quick touch on design, E450 is striking in the way only coupes can be due to the sleeker nature of the breed. 2021 models receive a mid-cycle refresh that give this machine an extra dollop of refinement. I like the hood flourishes. The DRLs now get a single element. Used to be that C-Class got one, E got two, S had three. When minimal lines come to mind, people usually think of Audi or Porsche. Mercedes keeps things pure here too. Very clean, unlike the Lexus LC, which also looks good, just a different philosophy. And I'll point out, no B-pillar. Some folks are grousing about the lack of a hood ornament on Mercedes cars. It would look dowdy on this one. Oh, I came to do the TP trunk test, and here's proof, but they're out. Yeah, every once in a while, they run out. Not even any Charmin. I'll be using my gear bags. None of these are as large as a carry-on suitcase. I'll estimate that four of those would fit here easily. Not sure a fifth would fit. There is no spare tire, space saver or otherwise, this wears run flat rubber. The bag hook could double as a recovery point to pull the 450 from a ditch. It's that beefy. No need to climb into the back seat to drop them, and though the boot is on the small side, the 40-20-40 split is a nod to convenience. All right, let's do the red light, green light summary. Green light, there's E-Class driving gravitas that's made better here by the turbocharged inline six mild hybrid. It's the powertrain to start with for any E-Class. The cabin is the perfect union of modern design and classic luxury, right down to the feel of the air vents. The revised sheet metal is simple, elegant, and a wonderful thing to walk up to on the way to work, assuming you actually go to work these days. Yellow lights? I like the multiple ways the MBUX user interface can be used. The menu layout isn't always logical, though. The back seat is fairly useful, but good luck selling that to a practical spouse. There's good active electronic safety tech available, uh, but shouldn't that be standard? This is a Mercedes. Red lights, the price spiral when adding options. Same as any Mercedes, this should be no surprise. The trunk is kind of small, also should be no surprise, this is a coupe. And no physical spare tire, which can really mess up your life in some situations. Of course, that would make the trunk even smaller. Don't forget, Mercedes makes a good number of two-door coupes in CLA, C, E, S, and GT forms. When you stop and think about it, Mercedes is the king of coupes, even when you throw out the four-door kind. And those really shouldn't count in the first place. Coupes are endangered. If you want to save the genre, go out and buy one, okay? Of course, I'm not going to be helping you financially, but really, feel free. Go ahead. Buy one. There's just something personal about a coupe. Keep track of how many times you have people in the back seat. You might find sedans unnecessary. And considering the state of the world, a sanctuary like the Mercedes E450 is priceless when it comes to soothing the soul. It has the power and grace to make every trip special. You all know I shoot my own videos. It's impossible to drive and get running footage. So this week, it's Rob Calero behind the wheel. Please thank him in the comments. He took time off on a weekday to do this. He has a day job. I should probably get one of those too. And there are always challenges. I like this location, but ultimately had to give it up because bugs were swarming me and the car. What a glamorous business. If you're in the market for a vehicle, my best advice is always test drive at least three different vehicles and get pricing. Don't just look at the total on the manufacturer website. That's important since different dealers get different pricing depending on all sorts of things like the volume they typically sell and customer satisfaction. I have a price quote service now and whether you use mine or somebody else's, it can be eye-opening to get real world figures. Plus, this is a weird time to buy a car, so it makes extra sense. Buy the car you love, especially if you're an enthusiast. You guys are smart, you'll do your homework. Remember, subscribe and then click notifications. I have to say that, I'm a YouTuber, and hey, 130,000 people can't be wrong, huh? Uh, sorry, no fun fact this time, because I'm out of Mercedes fun facts. I've already done the logo. You know, air, land, sea, 
the fact that Mercedes was one of the founder's daughters. Uh, but I will talk about coupes. I like coupes, probably because I'm an auto rider. Auto riders like different cars. Uh, we like station wagons. We like diesels. We like manual transmissions. I've owned seven, no, eight coupes in my lifetime. Um, and I'm married to a woman who hates them. She absolutely hates them, and I own one now. Um, the doors are long. She finds them cumbersome. We live in Seattle, and when you're parked on a hill, they fly open. So she's a lovely woman. She puts up with me. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.